So what the Hammond postulate means is that because the transition state is this unstable compound that's got bonds that are in the process of being broken or bonds that are in the process of being formed or maybe a combination of the two and it doesn't it's it's not a, a stable molecule it doesn't have uh you know an isolatable um structure the the transition state is is very fast we sometimes we say it's fleeting it only exists for fractions of a second the structure, whatever it is, with half bonds in the process of being formed or broken, it's going to look the most like the reactant, the stable compound, the reactant or product or intermediate that is closest to it on the energy level diagram. So we can say that for this particular transition state, whatever it looks like, it's going to look like some kind of combination between this reactant and the first intermediate. And because it's closest in energy to this intermediate, this reactant's quite a bit lower in energy, this intermediate's closer in energy. Because it is closest in energy to this particular intermediate, the structure of transition state number one is going to resemble the structure of intermediate number one more than it resembles the structure of the reactant. It's definitely going to look a little bit like both. Transition state number one looks like intermediate number one. It's going to have characteristics of both, but it's going to more, more closely resemble intermediate number one. For transition state number two, I didn't do a very good job of drawing uh, an energy level diagram that has much difference between these two energies, but this transition state is going to resemble both intermediate one and intermediate two because it represents the molecule as it changes from intermediate one to intermediate two. And it looks like on my diagram, they're both pretty much equal in energy, but I think that intermediate one looks to be a little bit higher in energy than intermediate number two. So we'll say for that reason that transition state number two looks more like intermediate number one. The last transition state in this particular diagram, this transition state is formed as we go from intermediate number two to the product. So it's going to look a little bit like intermediate number two. It's going to look a little bit like the product. Because it's closest in energy to the intermediate number two, its structure will resemble intermediate number two. Oh, oops, I think I said that. I think I said that the transition state number two looks most like intermediate number one. It's kind of, it really kind of looks like they're both about the same in energy, but. No, we'll go with this one as the lower energy. So let's draw some pictures of what this means in terms of transition states looking more like one reactant or uh, intermediate or a product. Say, for example, Let's say we have a reaction that is single step exothermic. The reactant is bromomethane. I'm going to draw it all out. And the product is methanol. The transition state for this for this reaction is uh, well. Let me back up and say, in this reaction, you can see that the bromine atom is being replaced by a hydroxyl group, an OH group. So, in this reaction, we're going to break a carbon bromine bond and we're going to form a carbon oxygen bond, the hydroxyl group. And we'll study this particular reaction later on in the quarter. The transition state for this particular process is going to show the bromine carbon bromine bond being broken and the carbon oxygen bond being formed. So it might look something like this. 
We've got all the hydrogens. There, nothing's happening to them. We're going to have a little bit of a bond to a bromine and a little bit of a bond to an oxygen because the transition state is closer in energy to the reactant than the product. The carbon-bromine bond is going to be more normal and more intact. And the carbon-oxygen bond is going to be longer and, and weirder in general. Neither one of them are going to be full-on bonds because this bond is in the middle of breaking and this bond is in the middle of forming. But this bond is going to be closer to a normal bond. This bond is going to be more, more weird, more abnormal. If we change the energetics of this particular reaction, just the way that it's drawn, because this is, this is the way that it would happen, but if instead of having this be an exothermic process, if we were to draw it out as an endothermic reaction, keeping the same reactant and the same product, the transition state for this particular reaction is, again, going to have, you know, the carbon with all of its hydrogens intact, and it's going to have a little bit of a bond to bromine and a little bit of a bond to oxygen. But now, because the transition state is closer in energy to the product, the carbon-oxygen bond is going to be the one that is the most normal, and it's going to be the carbon-bromine bond that is long and abnormal and weird. And that's what we mean when we say that the structure of the intermediate more closely resembles the nearest reactant or product, excuse me, the structure of the transition state more closely resembles the structure of the nearest reactant or product or intermediate. You can practice this with conceptual checkpoint 6.7 and the problems that are in that. And your study question for this section are, what is the Hammond postulate? What is the difference between an intermediate and a transition state? And what is the difference between kinetic and thermal control?